Welcome to the Absolutely Everything Pass Wednesday night call. I am so happy to be with you guys tonight. <clears throat> I know that there are a lot of new people on tonight, so I want to welcome you. And it's our special coronavirus isolation edition. And let me tell you something really, really, really cool about the isolation edition of the Absolutely Everything Pass. We have decided to add a bunch of bonus things to the Absolutely Everything Pass so that you get so much value out of these calls. So we have, you know, usually the Absolutely Everything Pass is the content that we have in the system. You know, you can, of course, watch the live at the Dolby event and many, many other events and totally do this inner work and amazing stuff. And then we have these Wednesday night calls. But I'm excited to announce that we've decided to, since everyone's at home living on the internet or doing stuff that fills your soul in different ways, at times you're going to probably want to combine the two. So I have a bunch of announcements for you. Before we even get into the content, the Absolutely Everything Pass is adding tomorrow morning, ladies and gentlemen, I'm all excited about this too, a 9 a.m. call tomorrow morning. This is really exciting because if you're in Europe, oh, look at that, Lindsay, just boom. Bonus live call with me tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific. So whatever time zone that is for you, you have to do the math on it. I don't know, but I know that that helps people that are in Europe that are here at like 1 a.m. your time. So we're gonna do another call tomorrow. We're gonna do a call tonight. We're gonna do a call tomorrow. And we will be doing tomorrow's call right after I will have done a giant meditation with my morning group and then done content with them. So I usually find myself really in the pocket. So I'm excited about the 9 a.m. call tomorrow. So please be here. Saturday, we always have a watch party. We watch kind of uh, either a series of videos or whatever, and they throw a watch party. So Saturday at 9 a.m., we have a watch party. Sunday at 9 a.m., we have a meditation. I will be doing a meditation with you guys, a guided meditation. We'll be doing it together. Monday at 5 p.m., we are going to have our new feature. Just It's just for that week, and we'll see what goes after that, but just to see how this goes and feel into it. We're starting something called the Kylego Connection. If you don't know what Kylego is, please check out the Live at the Dolby event because I do it a lot with that audience. And we'll explain it there too. But the Kylego Connection is going to be your opportunity to Kylego. You're going to learn how to do the Kylego exercise, which is where you talk about your future as if it's past tense. Right. So if I talk about next week as if it's last as if this call right now was a week ago, and I was like, I remember when you enjoyed the shit out of the Wednesday night call a week ago when I was in my cute blue shirt. And then the next morning you enjoyed the 9 a.m. call. And I remember you making the most out of this week that many of you were isolated. You enjoyed the Saturday morning watch party. You enjoyed the meditation. You totally you know, shifted your life when you meditated and you made total new choices to kind of enter maybe a new fifth dimension. Then on Monday, oh my God, it was so amazing. You did the Kalego connection. It was so crazy. And then Tuesday at 9 a.m., one of our amazing team members named Joey, who's a Wim Hof teacher and so many other things, is going to be doing a breath event. Like, uh, let me make sure I'm saying that right. Yeah, breath session, um, where he's going to he's going to come on and he's going to teach you how to connect to your breath, connect to the moment, connect to your body, and so many different expansive things can happen from it because you guys are here. And we're all in this place where quite a bit of the world is being quarantined or losing our jobs or whatever. And we want to add the most value that we can to your life and put a lot of focus on the absolutely everything past. So I'm just so excited to start off with the announcement that we want to give you the greatest amount of value for the littlest amount of your contribution so that you can 
I mean, your financial contribution, making it as, as cheap as possible. And we ask you, though, to give your time contribution, really put yourself in it and do everything you can to make the most out of the Absolutely Everything Pass. We're going to be doing this with you, and we are dying to make this something so special and make the most out of the fact that life is causing us to reflect Life is causing us to go within. Life is causing us to go deeper. Life is causing us to shift. Life is causing us to do so much stuff. And one thing I have to reflect to you that I've seen with all the people that I've been doing one-on-ones with and working with every single day lately, I've had so much fun working with people and just chilling in the house. And one of the things that I've discovered is a huge pattern that I want to talk to you about. And that pattern is I've seen that every person that I'm working with and myself, everything we've been scared to experience in our life, we all have really big fears, deep fears. Some of us might have a fear that you're worthless. Some of us might have a fear that you'll be seen as not enough. Some of us might have a fear that you'll be shamed. Some of us might have a fear that you can't make both sides happy about something. Some of us might have a fear, I don't know, that you're not enough. And life is doing what it can to make you face that fear. In other words, it's actually trying to cause you to literally let go of the holding on of that fear, the, the I don't want anyone to see this part of me. It's too hard right now. So to give you an example, someone who's working with yesterday, he has a fear of being worthless. And his fear of being worthless is based on if he's not working. He believes if he's not working, then he will be worthless. So to his dad and his childhood, he would be worthless. So this is bringing that up because now he can't work. And his power is, can I be okay with the fact that I feel worthless right now? Because the second you're finally okay with that feeling, it's going to pass and you're going to see that you're still okay that you're still alive. It's it's out. People see that you're not working. And you see that people see that you're not working. So will I be worthless? Am I worthless? And finally, you can be able to release that fear because life is causing you to face the fear that you've been so scared to have. I have another client I was working with this morning. She's amazing. And she said we could make that a video. She has a big fear of conflict. And it's amazing because she has this fear of conflict. And now she's dating a guy. Weirdly, isn't this weird? She has a fear of conflict and she's dating a guy that when they have an argument wants to go right in there and discuss it. Here's this woman with a fear of conflict. And how interesting that she chose to date a person that literally walks right into conflict. You see, the thing that we're mostly scared of is what we always bring into our life. Everything that you're worried about often becomes the type of person you choose to date because they're going to actually cause you to face the thing that you're scared of. So often they can penetrate your heart because you have a fear of conflict and you see this guy's okay with conflict. So now it's like past your your boundary and here you are feeling alive because it's okay that you're working through this, but that's also the thing that makes him or the person you're dating, the person that you don't like, right? There's this person that can can help me with my fear of conflict. And this is the person that can make me face my fear of conflict. So we often, whatever we're worried about, we often create the polarity and choose to be with a person that has the thing that you're most scared of. Like if you have a fear of feeling shamed, you might actually start dating someone who would be the most likely to be shaming you, right? We usually don't ever actually look for the thing that would actually keep your fear alive, right? Like I have a fear of being worthless so or I have a fear of, you know, no connection. I have a fear of conflict. Oh, I'm going to date someone else who has no fear of conflict. Well, then neither of you would discuss anything. Neither of you would have polarity. There'd be nothing there. 
because both of you are the exact same. You both have a fear of conflict. While an issue's coming up, okay, let's just both go into our rooms. Or if you love conflict, you might totally not mesh with another person that also really loves conflict because both of you will just spend all day never leaving the house, working through everything, and there would be no growth. So this person has a fear of conflict. She ended up really liking this guy who totally deals with conflict head on and probably is in pain if no one else deals with it. So that's his trigger. And she's quarantined with him until June. So check that out. Here's life. Every single thing that you are most scared of. It could be I'm scared of being unloved i'm scared and and how do you measure unloved if i lose this job if i lose this whatever notice that life is starting to make you just experience that thing that you've been able to hide from life that you've been able to protect from life that you've been able to not have the world see, have other people see. You've Here's been this thing that you didn't want anyone to know or that you don't want anyone to see you as. Here's this thing. And life goes, I'm releasing it. I'm making this come out. I'm, I'm making you just see the world is finally crashing into... A giant thing. She she just said in her situation she's going to be with him until June. It's not like June is the official we're all here till June to answer your guys' questions. So it's out. And what happens when it's out? Now you can move forward. There's freedom in your fear being faced. It's out. It's amazing. You're here now. You've had to face this thing your entire life. And now you, you, you did, and it's done. So this is a really, really big time because now that you don't have to, like, okay, so Tiffany just said, makes me terrified to feel abandonment. I don't want anything to happen to my family. So just so you know, in 2020, it's inevitable that you're going to feel huge abandonment. It's not even necessarily that it'll be with, the, it, with your family or anything else, but it's going to become eventually impossible for the thing you're scared of to be held on to forever. So eventually it's out. You feel abandonment and you go, wow, I'm still here. It's fine, right? <sighs> what do I do now? Now that I don't have to worry about holding on to that thing anymore, it's gone, it's come, it's gone, freedom, right? And I was thinking, and as I was talking to another client today, we were talking about how life is trying to birth something new. And our job is to understand that our new life in many different ways is trying to birth itself right now. But we have to realize that it's not always ready right away. So in other words, in, a, in an actual embryo, in an actual baby, when the baby's in the womb and it's developing, there's a point where the baby doesn't have hands, the baby doesn't have fingers, the baby doesn't have, it's just this little teeny dot inside of the mother. And the mother has an awareness that this is in process. The mother has an awareness and doesn't go, well, there's no fingers or hands, screw this. Do you get what I'm saying? The the mother doesn't go, well, you know, that's it. There's there's no, there's, you know, this doesn't work. My life doesn't work because it doesn't have fingers and hands. You understand that when a baby is born, that eventually the, the baby is not walking yet, that the baby at first is just screaming, that you might go, is the because you know the baby will eventually grow up, you you are okay with the screaming because you know that it's passing. But but if you if you didn't know that, if you didn't know this is it, and you go, it, my life is now just screaming, which instead of a baby could be, I'm just totally broke. I have no creativity. I, I, I'm fired from this job. I'm not loved right now. I'm being abandoned. Yeah, sit back like the mother of a baby and know that life is trying to birth itself right now through you and it needs you to hold the space that a mother understands that it's, or a dad too, it's going to take time. 
because there is a nine month process from conception till birth. And then birth isn't even necessarily like, oh, we're done. It's like now we're starting. But that process takes time. Right. And the process of what's trying to happen with your life is taking time. And your job is to understand that something is birthing, not only in you personally, but in the world. And our job is to go right now, today, my life can't walk. That's not every day. But we move as if the moment that we're in is the rest of our life. And we forget that there is a process that's happening right? So often things feel like they're falling apart. That could be the baby falling down. Well, you know that the baby falls down hundreds of times before the baby's able to walk. So when you feel, oh, I just got abandoned. Oh, that's the baby falling down. And even though the baby just fell down, it's actually better at walking a little bit more. Every time the baby falls down, you put it up, it's slightly better at walking. It's still not good, falls down. Boom, that's abandonment. Someone just left me. Someone's talking shit about me. Baby falls down, right? And you, you don't go, well, the baby will never walk. Might as well not even be here. Life is not working for me. This baby is not the baby I want. God, I hate my baby. That's how we talk about our life. F my B. <laughs> I hate my baby. No, you understand that the baby is in process. And so as there's some knowing, and why do you have that knowing? Because you've seen your entire life evidence that every baby will become a grown up. Now you've also seen in your entire life that every problem you've ever encountered 20 years ago, 10 years ago, passed. And imagine how much more could happen if you held space like this versus constantly being unconsciously in the belief that the pattern and the temporary that's going on in that time is the truth of your entire life. That would be crazy, right? So when the baby falls down, you go, I understand he or she'll get up and we hold space. So we hold space for your life is birthing right now. The world's life is birthing right now. And aspects of the, the world that are not you or the world are falling apart. And your job is to sit back and hold space for the knowing that it's birthing. It's totally chill in the back and start connecting more to the space that a parent has more than being in the baby. Like most of us move as if we're the baby. Like when the baby falls down, it'd be weird if a parent had the baby fall down and then you fell down too with the baby. You get what I'm saying? You're like, oh, that's me that fell down. No, 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 no. A passing story is falling down. You're the parent. You stay the parent. Oh, someone just uh, told me I'm fired. Stay the parent, right? Stay in the vibration of the higher you, right? And you're like, no, 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 that's this, this, this. Stay in the knowing. Another person I worked with today, we were talking about, I got all this great stuff that came from today. We we're talking about the energy of A energy, okay? A energy is different than B energy. A energy is a knowing that everything's in purpose. And A energy talks as if there's something beyond the egoic story of you, right? The A energy goes, it's gotta take its own time. A energy says things like, it's birthing itself. I understand that it's in process. I understand I don't know the whole story. And you hold space for A energy. B energy is that energy that you got when you were a kid. And you say to yourself, I have to do this and I better. And B energy works from a fear from childhood. If I don't do this, I'll be abandoned. If I don't do this, my dad won't love me. If I don't do this, that's what's run almost everything in your life. Almost every decision we've had in our life is kind of a have to feeling or I better. And the better would mean because I don't want to feel something here. So up until 2020, almost every decision we've made was some type of B energy, 
have to energy. If you take a job you don't love, that's because you're in B energy. I better do this because I, I'm scared of not being loved. I'm scared of being seen as not enough. I'm scared of being bullied again, like in my childhood. I'm scared of my dad saying I'm not, I'm scared of my mom walking out on me. I'm scared I will be humiliated again. That's the energy that almost every time I work with someone on the call, you can see me fine. People are building businesses out of B energy. And B energy this year is less and less and less sustainable. Do you notice that we're kind of in this bizarre time that the more you try right now, the less it works? Like if you try to create something out of force, it falls apart, right? A energy is guided energy. It's you. It's you as the space of the mother of all of life. And when you're holding space, you might have this voice that kicks in and goes, what do I do? How do I do this the right way? Am I even, and you become the A energy parent. You become the mother or the father of that voice that's asking that. So our job in 2020 is to hold space for what's trying to birth. A energy, love energy becoming the parent of the egoic construct that's been trying to do stuff to get love or avoid not being loved. And in 2020, that's what's falling apart. You'll notice more and more trying and less and less success. Right now, a lot of people don't know what you're learning right now. So they're going to try harder and fight harder and be more and more louder in their B energy. And that's why there's more loud and more anger and more effort. And weirdly, life is starting to feel less fulfilling because you're getting the response to ego versus soul. So ego's trying and it's forcing and it's wanting to make it happen. But there's something in you that understands what I mean when I'm saying a energy. Like if you go to sit at your computer and work because you think you have to and you better and people will be mad at you if you don't, right? You will get more done by actually taking a minute, getting off the computer and connecting to yourself. What you can do is is so much more in this energy, but it looks like so much less. You're going, wait, so I'm just going to sit on the couch and do nothing for a few hours? You have no idea what's trying to come your way. You have no idea what's trying to move towards your soul. You have no idea what's trying to be received, right? You have no idea what's trying to be seen Because almost every moment of your life has been clogged with, I better do, and you're staring at the energy of what's falling apart. And so you're looking at what's falling apart. That's B energy. So notice that when you feel this strain, A energy says, something's birthing. You're holding space for what 2021, 2022 is going to have to look like. And this is what a lot of people refer to. In a way, this is kind of what a lot of people refer to as the fifth dimension, a dimension where you're actually connected more to source, more to the universe, more to the now than to the temporary and the fear, right? We've just lived in our fear and life has been so not making us move uh, through our shit enough and we've had enough addictive patterns and we've had enough i don't know we've had enough ability to kind of skate by and not have to look at the fact that we're still getting just enough love and money and and comfort to get by that we kind of can just skate by and some people could be comfortable at zero dollars some people could be comfortable at just a little bit just like i just need just a lot enough i just need to get this paid off so my because my parents taught me that and some people say i i'm not happy unless i have millions whatever that kind of energy That kind of thing is falling. And what the only thing that will make it 
in the next couple of years because this energy, B energy, you're going to see louder and louder. And fifth dimension is you connected to you. Fifth dimension is you holding space for something bigger that's birthing. So let's say you go to your computer, as I was saying, and you feel this, I have to, I have to do. You doing that because you think you have to do is you doing something literally just because you don't want to feel something from your past. That's the only reason you're doing it. And you're like, no, 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 I'm doing it to make money. No, 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 you're not scared to lose money. You're scared to lose or the, the thing that you don't want to feel and have that scene. I'm scared to feel worthless if I don't have the money or I'm scared what will happen, that energy. So when we let that, right. So Sue, Sue Mitchell says, I need to pay the utility bill so I won't be cold. Uh, what? It's not what my parents think. I promise you, A energy will be worth so much more. The only thing that's going to make it through the next few years is innovation. A energy holds innovation. A energy, for instance, in this time, oil is falling right now. Why? Because oil is an old way for things to work. So guess what is about to collapse along with half of the economy? Cars that are not electric, right? It's an old way. They're trying to still stay alive, but old ways are falling. Now imagine the cars are an example of you. Weirdly, A Energy held space for electric innovation, right? Whether you like it or not, Tesla is an innovative company. They're making solar. They're actually making ventilators right now for people that are going through the coronavirus. They're actually right now, out of nowhere, just spontaneously making ventilators. Why? Because they are innovation. They're innovation. A energy holds space for innovation. It's very big you understand that. We are scared to have this fall apart. We're like, I'm not going to be able to pay the bills if I don't stay in this energy. Actually, this is an old Ford. So we are sitting here going, I'm not going to pay the bills if I move into the energy of massive innovation. Now, I'm telling you, you might be able to fight a little bit longer and you might be able to completely put yourself in a new energy but at the same time, the old you is trying so hard to fall apart and the new you is birthing itself, right? So there's a new birth that's trying to come through you and it comes through A, energy. A, energy. That's your job. A, energy. Innovation. You. Possibility. <sighs> So how do we get there? My first offer is to take a deep breath and listen to now. Hmm. Feel what's here right now. what's here right now. And notice when you hear your heart beating or you just listen, I need you to understand something. We have created a world for ourselves that says, if I'm not outputting something, if I'm not doing something, then I'm not enough. But you know what? You've done something from the old way so much that it's time now to receive something. It's time now to receive new energy and new love. It's time for you to understand that there is downloading energy trying to come in and tell you bigger things. Like if you're constantly trying to save the old way, you can't hear the new way. And the same part of me that can hear a new way or Elon Musk can hear a new way or anything else is trying to happen for you. 
and you only have focus on what you receive and you got to take your focus off how other people do everything right you have to take your focus off how everyone else does everything and just focus on your connection to source the old way is absolutely obsessed with how everyone else does things and we're finally tired of it because we're sitting here like talking about celebrities we're talking like aren't we tired of it do you notice how much even in this time things that were kind of cutting edge and exciting in the past don't work now like for instance in 2008 we had the big recession and that was the birth of netflix and it was kind of exciting because netflix was cutting edge and different than you know renting movies or the old way that we watched movies before that and when netflix came out it was this really exciting cutting edge thing now do you feel how you've in a way kind of past Netflix. Do you get what I mean by that? That you actually, yeah, Netflix had first started mailing DVDs and was head to head with Blockbuster. And then eventually we had the streaming service Netflix and it was huge because it was cutting edge. In fact, if you look at the old way versus the new way back then, the old way was Blockbuster Video. And Blockbuster Video was trying so hard to fall apart. And, and if you're going, I got to pay the bills with Blockbuster Video and their horrible late fees. Yeah, but Netflix was innovation. Netflix was A energy at the time, right? But Netflix worked. So then we get obsessed with Netflix and the people that created Netflix made that way the way. So now Netflix is moving to B energy. Do you get what I'm saying? Now it's not cutting edge. Now... There's new things trying to happen. In other words, can you feel that part of you that goes online, looks through the same shit, goes through the same YouTube videos, same Netflix, and is tired of it, right? Do you notice that part of you that's just tired, that feeling of going on Twitter or Facebook or, or Instagram, and, and you're like tired of it because you've moved past it. You are more cutting edge than that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And had Blockbuster Video tried to hold on to the old way and keep going, and Netflix tried to copy Blockbuster and stay the Blockbuster model, it would have collapsed immediately. But in 2008, around that time, it was cutting edge and different, right? New cutting edge is coming, but you can't see what it looks like because you're staring at your B. And I'm not just talking about innovation for business. I'm talking about your life. New cutting edge is trying to happen. And there's only one place you can find it here, this space, my place, no, your <laughs> space around you. So what's happening? All kinds of our B energy is collapsing. And that's 3D. That's the old way. And I don't mean it's old like a way is old. I just mean the energy that no longer serves us has to fall this year. The next two years is just the collapse of that. And when something is falling, it gets louder. Like someone, if, you're, if you think you're going to drown, you get louder. You go, help! Ah! And you scream and you're louder. The old story is drowning and on its way down, it's going to yell. It's going to be louder. It's going to be crazier, right? So when you hear loud, when you hear loud energy, when you hear just the world's getting crazy, when you see we're all running around and screaming and everyone's mad at every politician and everything, why? Because the old way is about to drown and we're going, help, help. And we're doing that individually. We're screaming at each other. We're mad. We're writing comments. We're crazy. We're doing this thing. We're louder, louder, louder because we're about to drown. Because that loud energy is, is a last begging energy for air. 
you're, you don't do that forever. You're not going to crazily scream forever. You're just finally in the last stages. You're exhausted. <sighs> Done. So A energy is what births. So take another deep breath. release it. And remember, we're going to do a meditation retreat Sunday together. I'm going to do a call tomorrow. So when you enter B energy, it's going to every day lose its grip faster and faster. Now you can wait till life finally makes it impossible to have any, any B energy, or you can move into A now. So practicing receiving, practicing undoing yourself from the patterns that keep B energy alive. Do you notice when you feel, oh, I better do something, and then you kind of go online a million times? Do you notice going online in most cases is B energy? Do you notice the old habits that you do that are B energy, that kind of keep it alive? Focusing on what other people are doing by watching the news or, or going online. B energy. The only thing you have to focus on at all is am I in A energy or B energy? B energy is like, I got to pay the bills. I got to get this going. A energy is like, I'm worth billions. Bills will be fine. I need to receive abundance past the level of my parents. I need to receive and understand that I'm more powerful than the story of my parents. What my parents taught me that's B energy. We love our parents. They're amazing. And then there's patterns that we all learn from them from different time, from a different time, right? And that's B energy. One of my amazing teammates, and then this became kind of a thing I did with a few different people this week, had this amazing analogy of being an astronaut and the astronaut having a tube from the astronauts back to that mothership floating in space. Notice B energy is that's the mothership. And there's a reason probably we call it mothership. Here's this life that you've had where you've been attached to this ship. And here you are attached to it and the ship's kind of holding you back and you don't understand you're holding yourself back because you're scared of actually being free. You're scared of floating through space, right? You don't wanna float through space, but you actually do. All right, so the mothership, which is your attachment to how life works via your parents, via your training, via your past, that's be energy. And our job is to feel love for that story and slowly cut the cord. Cut that too. Let yourself actually see yourself today. Cut that too. Because that tube is connecting you to your B story. And that B story is third dimension. And that third dimension is what's holding us back. A way you can cut the tube. There's so many ways. I had someone working with me the other day, my friend Celia. She was working with me and she had me write down all the old patterns. Shame, things that I feel like I'm not enough. You know, people in my life that I feel don't align with me anymore. Should me write? You think you can't. Yeah, Ali says, you think you can't breathe without that tube connection to the mothership, but it's a story. What if it turns out by cutting it, you discuss, you always thought you couldn't breathe, but it turns out you can. So Celia had me write down all these things, different people in my life that don't, don't feel like they align stories from my past, I'm not enough, all kinds of shit. And then she had me take that thing and look at it and burn it. I'm going to dare you to do it because I sat there, I burnt it on a gas stove, and then I put it outside and it was a paper burning kind of in the rain. And I just gave myself this moment of a ritual and, and watched it go. And then there are people that I habitually kind of want to tell things to, to get approval that I usually would call at that point. And then I didn't. I noticed the next morning I didn't want to call people whose approval I'm chasing because I had burnt a list that actually said that person's approval on it. 
And I noticed when I actually watched it go up into smoke, it was like I kind of felt it leave my body. And then the next morning I was going to, I would have called that person again and been like, I did this, aren't you proud of me or whatever. And I didn't. And it made room for different things to show up in my life that day. And then I was like, ah, should I look at this thing online? No, I just sat on the couch and listened for two hours. Then I had incredible calls with clients that all said, I want to repeat and do it again. We had so much fun. I felt so motivated. I felt so good. Then the day was over and I listened to silence for two more hours and saw my daughter. What a day. And she got a totally different dad. My daughter got a totally different dad because I, you said approval or sharing. The way that I, I have done it before was approval. But when I released that and burnt that, my energy was a little bit more A. I'm not at all saying I'm all the way A, but my energy moved more from B to A. And I'm in the practice right now. And life is in the practice of knocking me over when I'm in B again, right? Like life is going, hey, you're in B. I'm going to make it really stressful. Okay, go back to A. It's just showing me I'm in B. When life is hard, it's not because of the situation. It's just showing you you're in B. Do you understand that? When life is hard, it's not showing you the thing. It's showing you you're sitting in B. You're sitting in an energy that is not ultimately you, right? So when life is showing you something and it's really painful, it's trying to show you, yeah, you're actually in an old frequency that doesn't serve you anymore. And it goes, I need you to get out of the habits that fill your B energy. I need to get you out of the old story. I need to get you out of what you're not. I need to free you. And I don't care what the world around you is doing. You cannot handle it in B energy. You have to shift to A energy. From A energy, you will have solutions to your B problems. In fact, your B problems will take care of themselves in a lot of cases. And you will sit there and see yourself moving into a place of A. And if you practice anything this week, practice that. Practice it big time. Marianne Williamson said something once that I thought was actually so brilliant. She said, you know, say what you want about terrorists, but one thing you can't call them is cowardly. They're willing to die for what they believe. And it's horrible and it's terrible. And we absolutely think it's horrible, but it's not cowardly because they're, they're willing to die for what they believe. Could you imagine if we loved with that level of conviction? Could you imagine if you went for you with that level? Not saying die for it, but I'm just saying like, imagine if you committed to love on that same frequency. Could you commit to love? the highest you could you commit to a frequency imagine you holding space for a frequency and someone calls you and they're having a hard time and you show them what they forgot that they are by being it right you forgot you forgot when you're stressing about what you are right <laughs> Carla's response to the guy's version. So good to see you, Carla. So good to be with you guys tonight. Just if you can dedicate yourself to anything, it's just taking your percentage a day up of being in a energy. And if you do it with the same intention of uh, a parent trying to teach their kid to walk, they don't give up. Right. And some parents will spend all day. I did watching my daughter fall and get up, fall and get up. And it took a weeks. It took weeks. And it's OK if it's not perfect, but every week you could be a few percentage farther. I haven't. 
you could be a few percent farther every week. And like playing the piano for years, you could be slightly better at piano next week. We got time. We're going to put as much as we got in now. We're going to let go of the results and move into a space for that. You're going to cut the cord on this. You're going to burn the paper of your old story, and you're going to move forward into a new space. Let's go to some questions. I dare you, in this amazing time of isolation, to spend shitloads of time listening to silence, listening to your heart, listening to the highest you. I dare you to spend a shitload of time making this week. I remember, I, let's make this call a week ago, right? A week ago, I remember when so many people on this call gave themselves a few hours a day of just gently listening to silence. And by the way, no one here called that the work anymore. People keep calling it, I keep, I'm in the work. I do the work. I'm doing the work. So what if we call it freeing myself? I'm, I'm just going to access my ultimate freedom, right? I'm just going to access the ultimate version of myself. I've had to change. So, you know, in the last few months, I shifted to a phone that had 7,000 phone numbers from a phone that had 7,000 numbers to a phone with probably 30 numbers in it. I've only got to check that phone once for a second. And there, there's a hard part about it is there's a ton of people I love that I haven't got to say hi to, but I also, and I will, but I also need to say hi to me because I've been in this energy of, of keeping that alive. Right. And, and I will go be that space, but I've noticed that as I stay that presence, like I really can appreciate who I do want to talk to. I will get the number of who I want to, whatever, but I'm in the space where I'm not just in the B energy of making sure that I'm answering every single, I got to find me. They aren't getting the greatest version of me anyway. Right. So let's go to some questions. Emma says, I've been trying to allow the feelings of panic to just be and not push them down. But as I watch the last bit of my money disappear, I'm in no job because of this pandemic. In lockdown with a partner who I was thinking of leaving, I find it harder and harder and my mind keeps jumping forward into what if I can't? What if I have to rely on others for money for a while? What if you do? What if you do? Maybe that's your biggest fear. Do you hear that? What if... What if that's your biggest fear, Emma? Do you hear how that right there? This is what I said. In this time, I started this call with, in this time, we are going to be faced with our biggest fear. I bet I could go through almost every question. We could find the biggest fear. Emma's biggest fear is needing to rely on money, on others for money for a long while, right? When I sit and meditate now, my mind and body is just jittery because the worst thing to you is relying on mothers, others on mothers for money. But why? Why? In fact, you know who'd be a great person for you? Someone who's horrified to loan or give money to someone else. Someone who has been receiving so much and not giving. That'd be a great person for you to meet up with because both of you would grow. Like if you could find someone who has the exact match to your fear, which is I've been receiving a ton of money and I have a huge fear, fear of giving some, they would grow because you can't just receive. That's like taking a breath in over and over and over and over again, but not breathing out. Emma, you've been re breathing out. You're saying I need to move to a dimension where I need to receive. Emma, you need to receive. My biggest fear, I can feel it, is what if I have to rely on others for money for a while? What if you do? So what? We're all in this shit. We are. Actually, we're all relying on others for, mother, for money because the government just signed a thing that said a ton of checks are going out in like, 10 years or whatever. Right? The American government just said they're sending checks out to people that made less than 75000 or whatever or 90000 Right? So we're all relying on others for money. 70 million Americans are suddenly relying on others for money. Your biggest fear is happening right now to 70 million people. 
right? And what if you're helping the people who give you money? That's true too. By the way, if someone gives you money and you received it, you made that money. Do you understand what I'm saying? We only associate making money as if you're working a certain way hourly and you get paid. But if you find money, right, you still received it. If someone gifts you money, you received it. Don't cut off ways that money's trying to come to you. That could be one of the biggest reasons why you're broke. Because God forbid I have to rely on others for money. Well, you have to rely on others for money when you work for them. You can't work for someone and then they change their mind on paying you for that, for that, right? You, you have to rely on others for money. In fact, that could be your greatest growth. And the partner that you find it harder and harder to, to live with, uh, that you were thinking of leaving, sorry, I put that together. Maybe this is your greatest opportunity. What is the partner triggering in you that you don't want to see? Now, if the partner isn't safe, that's a different thing. We got to figure out how to get you out of there. But what I'm saying is sometimes the person we don't work with is just they trigger in us what we don't love about ourselves. So if you have the intention of growing with this partner, there could be something totally different. So what I want to ask you, Emma, is first of all, can we bring Emma on? Is that even a possibility? I don't know if Emma's on the call. But you might have this huge, the universe might be making you face all your fears right now. It says start answering, but it doesn't have the option to call Emma. So I don't know, Lindsay, if we're able to. But I hear in that sentence, I'm the, in fact, isn't it interesting that Emma waited until she was getting totally broke to finally go to her biggest fear? Right? Not, you, you could rely on others for money even when you're rich. Dude, Elon Musk, the most innovative person in the world, that guy's just getting money from people all over the place and he's already like a billionaire. There's investors that give him money. He brings value, but also there's people that just give him money. Like th that guy has money coming in nine grillion different areas. Why? Because he's creating value. And your highest value you have, everybody, is A, energy. In this time, A, energy will be worth more than money. Did you hear me? A, energy will be worth more than money. We're watching money tumble anyway. We're watching people with B, energy try to make money. And eventually, A, energy, the space in this time, especially if money just collapses. What happens if money collapses and we go to the gold standard again? And suddenly, we have this kind of depression-y thing. Money won't matter. In the Great Depression, people burnt money as 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 fire fuel, right? So at the same time, one thing that is consistent and available and something we've overlooked forever is A energy. And A energy is the only thing that's going to move us forward now. So that's kind of my answer. What I hear, Emma, is your biggest fear, and I might be wrong, but your biggest fear is, what if I have to rely on others for money for a while? Well, thank God this happened so you can finally practice receiving money and not thinking of it as relying on them. Changing the energy from relying on others for money to receiving abundance. Undo yourself from that fear because it's cutting you off from the gifts that are inside of you that you can offer other people that's worth money. Right? All of you are more... All of you are more valuable than money. You've just never used it. All of you are more valuable than every asset that you think you're losing. You've just never used it. And life's finally going, fucking use it. Life's finally saying, use the thing. Yeah, yeah, Kyle, as I said recently, what if your houses are worth three bucks suddenly? It doesn't matter because you have something that's worth something, right? This content that's coming through me, I, I don't know where the hell it's coming from. You all have that. You all have that. I have never worked with someone where we couldn't find proof that they have that if they're open to showing that. Every one of you has this. It's coming from the same space around me that's around you. You have it. Is it worth something to you? Is it changing you? Is it shifting you? 
if the, all the money in the world disappears, am I still able to do this right here? Am I still able to find this truth? Yes. How did I find this truth? By going through so many lows and digging deeper and deeper in me that I was forced to meet my soul. You all have that. Everyone has that. Do you feel what I'm saying? You are that amazing. You're worth more than money. The thing is, you have to lose money to finally access the thing in you that's worth more than money. So Emma, the first thing we do is we go right past this thing. We don't rely on others for money. We receive abundance from everywhere. But we're all, you, by the way, just so you know, most of us are going through what you're going through, right? Most of us are going through, most people are going through what you're going through. So as you see your bank account falling, notice everyone's is. And so we're all in this together. So life's going to change with your change. So if that happens and we're all in this together, then that falls. We have to find what's worth something in you. And if you someone has said, uh, I feel unworthy due to that belief Kyle outlines, got it. It's just because we have to go deeper. We just have to go deeper, right? <laughs> We have to go deeper. That's it. You might not have got to see the thing that you are. It's coming. But do you hear how even in these kind of things that we're saying, we're talking like money is the biggest thing. Right? We're talking like money is the biggest thing. This content that's coming through, the meditation that you can do, the connection, the higher vibration, the possibilities, the creativity, the flow, all is yours. All is yours. We are the biggest thing. And you know what? We've never given our reason for being here. We are the biggest thing and we don't give it out. Why? Because our circumstances have been trained to us that money is so much more important than the biggest thing. And finally, the universe is like, I'm going to knock you all on your ass because none of you are using the thing that I made you here to use. And you're just overeating and consuming and buying a bunch of shit and thinking going to the mall is a bigger deal than becoming the thing that I was creating you to be. Source was like, dude, do you know that you're all Martin Luther Kings, that you're all Elon Musk, that you're all Oprah's, that you're all, you name it. Do you know that you're all Mr. Rogers and you're going, oh my God, Forever 21's closed? What are you doing? Like that's like Source is like, why are you eating Denny's? Like, what are you, like, what are you doing? Like if Source could talk to you, right? It'd be like, I made, you're all Mozart. And you're upset that your Johnny Rocket's job is is on hold. Like I I I you're all Mozart. Mozart was an example as the greatest composer at like seven. You all have that. Jesus said these things you can do and greater. If God, if God, we look at you. Do you get? what you're capable of. It's like, do you remember that one time you said something and it was magically funny? Do you remember how quickly you figured out how to do something you didn't know how to do? I'm trying to show you your skills. Do you remember that time where you suffered and then worked through it and then found that magic? I'm, I'm trying to show you something. Dude, we made back then, back in the old days, like all those musicians were like the greatest. Now we had so much comfort that it's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. But back then it was like, <laughs> Beethoven, who wrote the craziest shit, deaf. Do you know Beethoven was deaf? He couldn't even hear the shit. And Brittany can hear. And she goes, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Five years. We need to fall apart and find our inner Mozart again. It's like, Source is like, I'm showing you everything. I even gave you the internet and showed you how you could do everything and you use it to watch fail compilations and road rage. Like, what? Like, you, life's going, I need you to become something magic. You're on a dimension that's so much farther than anything we've ever done. It showed us what Mozart did in like the, what, 1700s, 1800s, something like that? 
What can we do 200 years evolved past that? <laughs> but we like devolved. But that shit that we're capable of is still in us. And if we want to create the ultimate world, it starts with you accessing you on the ultimate level. And life is making us all wake up and it's going, here we go. Here we go. Everyone stay home. It, like universe, like everyone stay home right now. No, you can't go anywhere. You can't go to Johnny Rockets. You can't go to work. Well, what am I going to do? Just stay there. We're going to shift you to A energy. What do I do? And I'll go online. Well, that's boring. Yeah. Welcome to meeting you. Oh, okay. I'll watch this. YouTube. I don't want to watch a YouTube video. Ugh. It sucks. Even the good videos are all gone anyway. Yeah. Stay there. Oh, I hate this. I'll just eat food for a while. We'll all gain weight for like a week. Well, I'll, like two, the first two weeks, we're going to totally overeat because we're just addicted. Ugh, I need to eat. Look at me. I'm in all over the place. All my shit's vegan and raw, but it's still, it's still like, I'm like, all right, a couple weeks of it. Now it's like, A, energy. My big rebellion is I'm overeating like <laughs> avocados. <sighs> you look in here and you think it's a clean place. This desk is a nightmare. I even got my mom's ashes here. So that should be a weird moment for you. Anyway, <sighs> the life's like, yeah, I'm making all your ways fall apart so that you're stuck with you. Welcome. Welcome. It's time. I think we've made our point. My point is <sighs> that was you. You guys, do you get my point? Are you hearing me? You have five seconds to answer. Okay. Do you get how amazing you are? Do you get how magic you are? Will you access it now? Will you let your biggest fear be seen? Will you allow yourself to switch it from relying on others to receiving? Will you give your gift? Will you cut the cord? Will you burn up the piece of paper and then turn it into ashes? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> turn the paper into ashes. What a day. Maybe my favorite call? I don't know. That was pretty fun. I hope you feel excited about life. I hope you understand that when things seem like it's falling apart, it's just the baby falling down and you know eventually the baby will completely walk. The baby will be a grown up. The baby will walk around and do things that are amazing. You just hold the space that that baby is the story of your life. That baby's the brokenness. That baby's the I'm lost. The baby is, I have to rely on others for money. And then we pick the baby up and go, okay, why don't you walk a little bit? And you, you learn how to rely on others for money. You learn how to open your heart and ask because the same party that was cutting off money from others was cutting off love and your gifts and your freedom and your joy and everything else. You're totally free. What are you going to do when you access what you are? That's what we're here for. You guys, I love you. It's been an honor to be with you because I'm opening a call up at nine in the morning tomorrow, Pacific time. I'm going to wrap this one up and let you guys process every single thing that you just went through and feel me as I tell you what a fun night it was to be with you. I had, I had such a fun night.
I love you so much. And maybe we'll answer some more of these questions tomorrow. And if you hop on at the 9 a.m. call, since no one has anything else to do, know that what that call and what we do with it can be worth more, right? Than you working another hour at a job that didn't fulfill your soul. This AEP could be worth more than anything for you if you use it if you live it, if when you leave here, you feel inspired and you create it, please feel that and give everything you got to the A energy that you are. You will flip at how quickly life changes for you. I love you guys. It's been an honor to be with you. Have an amazing night. 